how that middle part went, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a yesterday with um well it wasn't really a podcast it was more of like a, a live a live jam <laughs> live jam yeah and it was so fun to capture but ended up kind of turning the room around and tried to put it back together here hopefully everything's sounding and looking okay <laughs> uh, that's one of the things i hate but eli um brought his drums and his we had a game alika who brought his A game as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, he, he brought his <laughs> new Pono bass, but he also brought that um, real tape delay that just really sounds amazing. So I don't know which one's going to come out, this or that, but look out for that. Um, Corey and Clay get the real rhythm backing. That was fun. Funking it up. Dean Town. Yeah. So, Kalei's beautiful uke from Cornerstone is quite epic. Talk about this guy. Uh, I'm a proud owner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the proud owner of a new Cornerstone. <laughs> Wait, let me. I gotta pull files real quick, and that's it. Okay. All right, so we have a brand new custom ukulele from our friends at uh, Cornerstone. And this ukulele is very, very special because it features some woods, um, a special type of mahogany known as the tree that has been known for this crazy type of wood grains that you see in a lot of high-end custom instruments, but they're so hard to get because it, you can only get this type of wood from the actual tree. Um, this right here from the top, you can it features a really nice, beautiful port offered cedar here and here it's nice and curly um, we got ebony appointments such as the binding armrest over here and there's so much other detail that um, is really really beautiful and it looks even more amazing up close we got really nice uh, mother of pearl inlays over here on the fretboard as well as turquoise fret dots that has been placed um, kind of towards like the, the edge or the left side of the fretboard if you're looking at it from the front. And um, if you go here up onto the faceplate, we have an ebony faceplate with the Cornerstone logo inlaid in abalone or mother of pearl. And now this is where it gets really crazy. As we turn the ukulele from the front and slowly make our way to the sides and back you start to notice this very unusual wood and believe it or not this is mahogany and as I turn it towards the back you can you can get a nice and clearer view of how beautiful this wood is and this is a rare thing to be able to play an instrument built out of this beautiful mahogany sets that's amazing um, these are also features um, some of my favorite Goto tuners. This is the 510s, the SX 510s. And I mean, it's like a very gorgeous ukulele. I forgot to mention in the back here, the neck is made out of 5A maple, curly maple neck. Just look at it. And I really like how it goes from dark from the um, ends here from both the top and by the neck heel and kind of gets lighter as you go towards the center of the neck very very beautiful amazing work sounds good i mean it's what you expect from a cornerstone ukulele to not only have some of the best aesthetics um, inlay work and all these types of little details but you're going to get an amazing sounding instrument let's check it out Thank you. 
I'm so good. It's amazing. <sighs> Did you show that end graft? That's hey. pretty. All these hidden little, <laughs> little details, like I was saying. I mean, just look at this coming down the center and the bottom. Bottom bolt. Or also known as an end graft. And then look at these inlays that are going around the body so it's not just binding on the surface or you know um binding on the surface with abalone there it's inlaid throughout the entire body which makes it quite incredible and the neck yeah like it's everywhere just check this out even the sides look at all that <laughs> so you get all this dual layer of um, binding coming around quilted mahogany from the tree side port armrests i mean oh could expect nothing less <laughs> yeah but this one's even more and part of that reason is um this is number 50 and uh, number 100 for overall instruments so it's his 50th ukulele wow. and he's built 50 guitars also so wow. this is so this is a very significant it's number um, 50 ukulele, ukulele and number 100 instruments wow so. Yeah, super awesome. cool. <laughs> and I gotta say, this is one of my favorite inlays ever. Yeah, this is really nice. That stained glass style. It's like it's not too much, but it's it's definitely it's, it's noticeable. Yeah, it's it's a lot of goodness, but yeah, it doesn't get it doesn't go over the line. Definitely. All right, so we're gonna get Corey on this next. Once he's done with something, I gotta say I am so tired. Like, <laughs> I I stayed up with Mike's down from Washington, Mike Love, and he's such a great friend. We stayed up way too late talking, <laughs> and then I had to be up to take my son to school, and then Mike slept over, and then we went hiking. So, you know, I I don't. I didn't see any like trail signs or anything like that. But if you go all the way to the end of the road um, on Pupakea, um, right around the middle of the North Shore as you're getting your way around there, it's kind of a almost scary road to drive up oh, with yeah. a few of the curves. Especially at night. It's, it's even worse well, at don't night. don't do it. At, yeah. <laughs> don't recommend that. But hit up the trail at the very end. You find some parking when it all ends there's kind of a a camp site on the left and you just kind of go straight alongside that and you just follow this kind of road for a few minutes and then it turns into a, a trail that you can see and it goes for a long time that's wow. part of why i'm tired because it was like uh, how many long was miles the, well, how, how long was the total height up and down? i don't even know but like it was definitely at least maybe Two and a half, three miles, something like that. Wow. But it's so beautiful. That's and the kind of scenery that you don't mind like taking a long walk. Yeah, and there's yeah. something about like talking while you're walking. Mm. You don't realize how many how much time goes by. Especially when you have like someone to keep you company and just enjoying like the, the scenery and being yeah. outdoors. Well, there's a lot going on at the same time. You're appreciating, you know, the what you're hearing from your friend mm -hmm. and you're appreciating the beautiful world we live in oh yeah yeah it's always nice to like take a moment to just enjoy what and, and you're getting some exercise it. but you're not trying to go heavy yeah. you know like, no like <laughs> no you're not you're not trying to run like a marathon or anything yeah. what did you used to do like p90 or some kind of oh they yeah didn't you used to do like some I, crazy stuff at one point i was high wolf i tried insanity but i was that was too much yeah I was just like, oh no! I don't think you're supposed to feel like you're you're gonna hurl, at, you know, doing every workout. That's, oh, I've seen people throw up. Yeah, it's pretty mean. But yeah, I'd rather go on a hike. I know, right? <laughs> I'd rather, yeah, I would rather throw up on a hike. Yeah, throw up, <laughs> I'll throw up on a hike. I've never thrown up on a hike. <laughs> I did a couple times. <laughs> what? Really? Because I was hungover. Oh uh, uh, yeah, we wake up, bro. Let's go hiking. Yeah, I woke up in the morning still. still <laughs> Coco Head. No, yeah, we did Coco Head <laughs> oh and Diamond God. Head. 
in and one day? Yeah, we did three trails. Oh, you guys are nuts. No, no, we're stupid. He, he threw up on each trail. Like, I would have just walked, got to the top of Coco Head and just give up and then have someone carry me. <laughs> it's crazy because we did Coco Head last. Oh. Well, at yeah. least Diamond Head is not too bad. That's an easy hike. Diamond Head was easy. And then we did uh, Manoa. Manoa Falls? Falls. I mean, that's not even really a hike. That's a kind of point hike. Kind of, yeah. You're just walking straight. Not, yeah, it's nice, it's though. not really an incline. It's pretty nice over there, too. Yeah. Super you guys nice. jumped in. What's your favorite like for take? I mean, what's your favorite trail on the island that's not, like, too gnarly where you take visitors? Mm, one of the easier hikes is probably Lanikai Pillboxes. Um, yeah, that's a fun short one. Yeah. It's, I mean, the only time it's challenging is if it rains... Like the you have day to do before, some climbing, right? I remember a little bit. You're not too yeah. far from a really nice beach, too. Yeah, it's a short hike. You know, it's a and beautiful view. And then you can kind of you know stay up there and just enjoy the view because you're basically hanging out on top of a an old military bunker. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what I never did was stairway to heaven. <sighs> I think we. I don't feel too long. Yeah, <laughs> I don't feel too. You know, you know how we did the Tobias video with the Kaava Trail. Yeah. I think we needed to do one with you two, Stairway to Heaven. Oh, man. Where you play Stairway to Heaven at the top. <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of cheesy. But... That's a long shot. <laughs> Literally. The, like, I mean, long height, when, long when I've seen it, like, yeah. where people are videoing it, like, we would have to put, like, a GoPro on our head or something. It looks really cool. <laughs> did you ever do that hike? No, I just said I never did. Oh. But, yeah, I mean, it's something that I... Uh, always thought about you have to like kind of i mean you're it's it's illegal to do it so you have to mm -hmm. get around the guard that gets there maybe get there at four in the I morning heard you, and, just, you just gotta bring some cookies to him and oh. you know, let you do he's like all right <laughs> he's like santa claus but i'm not gonna tell you what kind of cookies <laughs> like, oh. sorry i don't got cookies today i got pop tarts <laughs> uh, yeah uh hpd yeah, right. <laughs> uh all right so as I had mentioned, Corey's going to give us a sample on this. Oh, yeah. So I'm in the hot seat today. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Sorry, rules. Yeah, we don't follow any rules. You know, we just switch it up. <laughs> There's no assigned seat. Cornerstone number 50 for Hizuku Lois. Of course. <laughs> challenge like you can only fret chords by the first position that you use so like if oh you use gosh. the second position <laughs> 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 all right no fingers gonna change the string <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that, that should be your lesson so um, we're gonna practice uh, we're gonna do an f major seven and we're going to move up the scale, but we're not going to rearrange our fingers. You're going to use the same exact fingers to do this. <laughs> and then G7. C7. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I like that. <laughs> wow, that was an amazing sound sample. <laughs> no, but, but that's, uh, that, that's Corey's like, exercise. <laughs> That kind of trumps the spider technique or whatever. Oh like, like spider, what, 5.0? <laughs>
So um, can you guys just for, oh, first Corey, he sent some extras there um, right next to you. The uh, Talk for a sec about that. Okay, so with, uh, with every ukulele, uh, every cornerstone, uh, Peter likes to include these uh, documents. This is the uh, Certificate of Authenticity. Um, this is uh, an included stand, a uh, coral wood stand. Some information in here about the uh, commemorative edition. And then there's this magazine as well. This is actually from like 1985. And it goes over some of the tree mahogany history and some of the things that were built. This is October, <laughs> October 1985. Wow. And uh, page 74 goes over the the tree. And that is right around here. So. There we go. Okay, so quilted mahogany, and it's a little write-up by Mark Berry. And you can see in here, like there's a drawers or like oh yeah, cabinet like made a, of like a dresser or a dresser, yeah, something like that, made of the quilted mahogany. What a waste! <laughs> Probably like... the rarest uh, mahogany you can get. Like a million yeah. dollar yeah. million dollar dresser. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so also, I want you to uh, talk about this tank of a... Oh, yeah. That it comes with. There you go. Oh, then we got a... Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got a... We're backing up a truck right now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Good thing Corey lifts weights. So, I like to, um, you know, instead of using a weight belt when I go diving, I just attach this to my body. <laughs> It'll just keep me under forever. You just sink all the way to the bottom. <laughs> I can't like swim back up. <laughs> this, is the, to... this is the safest case ever. Yeah. Like if if the world ends, at least your ukulele will be you know safe and sound. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For exactly. the next few centuries, <laughs> they're gonna stumble upon this uh, very solid device. They're gonna open it up. The latches are gonna be rusted off. They'll be like, what is this? It's going to be the rediscovery of the ukulele <laughs> in 2330. <laughs> Man, that case is beefy. The Koa stand that it comes with, on the other hand, uh, yeah, that one's going to be gone. <laughs> but but that's really cool. I, it's back there. I'll show it in the pictures, and it's a, it's a cool design, too. This case but, is um, a good, like, 20 pounds. Um, just by itself. <laughs> but it's like an armored case. No. Um, Actually, Jake was traveling with ca a case like that for yeah, the, the longest case, right? time. Um, I think he was using Kelton. Ah, oh, right, right, right. It's kind of similar. You know, it's like a fiberglass mixed with. Why? What? What is this? Um, when did he? He didn't say what. Yeah. Uh, what kind of case it was? It looks like a Kelton, but that's probably the most protective case for ukulele on the market is either between Kelton and Hoffie. Hoffie. Those are the most beefy cases. And they're not cheap. They cost no. more than most ukes. <laughs> yeah, I Does mean it... like 800 bucks starting or something yeah. like that. Doesn't Mike have his uh, he has a guitar version, right? I, I think he does, but in, in uh, I want to say my, uh, the carbon fiber Oh. oh yeah, me, okay. There's also Colorado cases, right? Didn't they buy out Kelton like that. or something? Or I don't know. Or no, maybe just it was Mike's guitar upstairs. Somebody knows. Tell us in the comments. Oh, I'd like to know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but what what I wanted to ask you guys is like, obviously there's a lot visually to appreciate, but uh, what are some of your thoughts on the sound? And do you notice differences from his other builds? Mm, one thing that I've noticed that is consistent with all of his builds is that they all come out nice, warm, and deep sounding. Yeah, he has a lot his, of bass. He has that, his tone, the cornerstone. Yeah, tone. it's definitely like you can tell right off of the bat that it's a cornerstone built ukulele because of the tone. But um, there's a, a sense of like overtones that I'm hearing from this piece that didn't come up from the other ones. Um, 
definitely this is probably one of my top three favorites from him i i'd say it's one of yeah one of my top three for sure it's beautiful the, one of the interesting aspects of the tree was its density being closer to a rosewood and the tonal quality yeah that's right mm-hmm. so you get like a more like deeper bassier response from mahogany like in this the, yeah in this in terms of like overtones and sustain uh, wow incredible i mean like how hard is it to get wood sets like this well i don't think you can the get tree. i don't think there's any more yeah. i mean i've seen some sites that were charging like yeah, six thousand yeah it's 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 a fortune now wow and it was always really expensive but made up the stupid rhyme in my head (laughs) because then we said it's the cornerstone tone it's a lot of (laughs) rhymes there and you know has a low g i was like yeah the low g has this really nice drone that really brings out that fine cornerstone tone (laughs) sorry gotta put it in your uh Slam poetry. Do, do like a Ooh, sing rap slam while you play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mom spaghetti. <laughs> Your dad looks like a yeti. <laughs> Shit, I'm probably gonna look like a yeti. Yeti in my eighty. Like, hey, hey guys, you wanna buy some new clothes? <laughs> Anyways, uh, this was this is super cool. The uh, has this little koa wood plaque that was lasered in and it says cornerstone fine handcrafted ukuleles number 50 of 100 and the circulation of my legs are kind of <laughs> well, I think it's heavy <laughs> that's not that it's a it's a very impressive case very amazing protective. amazing work <laughs> from peter and um yeah wow so cool we have a couple other customs to get to tonight. So. Oh, I have to show the, the goods on the, the inside. Ooh, wow. Nice That's blue. a lot of padding. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, case flap what? is like four <laughs> inches thick. Oh, check out that compartment. Yeah. What is... Uh, oh, Uh-oh. there's a whole lot of other goodies hidden inside. Oh, wait. We're, we're still discovering. Um, we have a Bovita up here. Keeps the humidity in the case very well. Calton cases. Yeah, it's, it is a Calton. Clay's right. Then this little invitation from Hogwarts School of Magic. Oh no, this is the uh, there's extra stickers for the Calton cases. Wow. The uh, quality control card. You got this extra. Ter- not not really extraterrestrial. This is more like alien <laughs> piece. There's a piece sign in there. There's the psychedelic. <laughs> yeah. That's Anyways, cool. And then a cool, which I thought was a cat. This is obviously a bear. Oh yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Nice. You get all these. These are really high quality stickers. They're like really durable. They're thick. Oh man. They would have never known. We Can we just cut that them. part out and we just keep this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it says... The <laughs> They're going to contact Peter. He's like, Peter, I got your number 50. Ukulele. He's like, yeah, hey, did you get those stickers in the case? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I would have... Corey's walking around with <laughs> them on his case. <laughs> I called it sticker case on like a... On a stag case. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Got more goodies. Stay tuned. On top of this being very protective, it smells really good on the inside. Oh. It's like a new house. Right, we're gonna take a short break and smell this case.
So we have a very nice Ono Koa tenor and this has a few features that is usually different from what you would expect from your typical Koa tenor. Um, one, it is a 18 inch scale rather than the normal or typical 17 inch. It has 19 frets total and it's a very beautiful ukulele. It sounds nice and what's really cool aside from it just having a nice cola top back and sides is that this is a prime example of what you can get with a high quality laminated ukulele. Laminated does not mean that it, it is inferior at all to solid wood because there is still solid wood on here. But what's different about this is that on the interior of, of this instrument underneath the cola so underneath the top, back, and sides, we have myrtle. And so when you build an instrument like this, you get wood um, and tonal com uh, combinations from and um, qualities from both types of woods. So you get the warmth um, and all the depth from you get from koa with a little bit extra coming from the myrtle. And what is really interesting um, about this uh, fretboard on this ukulele is that uh, you can call, call it a cantilever um, fretboard and um, as you can see it's not touching the soundboard at all it's actually floating and one of the first times I've ever seen this done on an instrument was done on McPherson guitars for a number of years and it's nice to see this being implemented on an ukulele and as I turn this to the other side is that you can see on, on the inside of the side port, we have these carbon fiber um, reinforced bracing, also called the flying buttress. <laughs> and this is something very unique um, to Pono ukuleles. You oh, don't no. really see the. Oh, no. <coughs> it's okay. Oh, no. <laughs> you just cut can out just that cut little out? split second. Oh. From the... I'm just going to say, oh, okay. no. <laughs> I keep getting mixed up. It's just a like one letter different. Okay. So this is a, a very cool feature that's available on Pono ukuleles. You just so, did it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I am losing it. All right, let me try that again. So that's a very unique feature that is available on all of the Ono ukuleles. Um, especially when you're going to be ordering custom instruments of this level, you should expect some very unique designs and things that you don't normally see on an ukulele. This features a really nice ebony bridge, fingerboard, koa faceplate, 
right here. Goto UPT tuners, our favorites here. And it has a very nice, deep, warm sound. I'm really liking it. Um, this is strung up through a, um, instead of having bridge pins or your typical tie bridge, this actually goes on the inside of the ukulele. So when you're stringing this up, you want to make sure you put the string in, pull it out through the side port, tie the knot, and then um, finish it up from there. Great ukulele. Check it out. That's a really, really nice ring. Yeah. Try again. Do the last chord you did. I was just so beautiful. Super chimey. It's, it's, got, it's got all the, you know, because it's got the deepness, but it's very clear on the high. It's really good. I mean, that's a you... new style uh, Steve Vibe uh, type. Oh yeah. So if you're, you know, <laughs> you're walking up the stairs, you know. It's a not. It's not a flashy uke at all, you know. But it's it's. Mm -hmm kind of got an artsy look and it's got an amazing yeah. sound don't let this ukulele fool you i mean it might not be as loud and uh, like looking and flashy aesthetically as some of the other ones but she's i mean sonically yeah sonically this is what you would want in an instrument this is kind of like an instrument that like i would probably pick up based on just purely on how it sounds and how it plays and I think with that 18 inch scale that you get slightly more sustained. Yeah. Just because of that's little, right. a tiny Th bit that's more. That's Corey's tension. favorite, or you know, that's what he had. I totally forgot about that. Gotten when he got a custom from uh, Kala requested that. That was an 18. I thought that was a 19. Fact, yeah. Uh, I didn't like the 19. It's too spread out for me.
What does that sound like? What song is that? <laughs> Can you um, teach the chords? Yeah. So that was a cool little kind of funky jam that we did. And that was in D major. I hit a f sour note at the beginning. That hit. doesn't sound like... Well, maybe it, it might come out good. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the chord progression. First chord is G. And this would really sound good if you if you play low G. I mean, you could do it in high G as well. It's just um, what I like to do, this style of music, I kind of like to use that as like the uh, pivot pivot string. Is that, does that make any sense? Good. Like that's like the bass string, I guess. And anyways, so uh, you could play it in either low G or high G. Low G, preferably, um, because uh, the fullness that you get and uh, you know the percussive stuff you can do with it. Anyways. Um, we're really just playing the top part of a G, so this one is a little different. You're going to add your ring finger to the fourth fret of the top uh, string, and you should get this kind of sound. And what we're doing is we're going between this and uh, F sharp minor. You do that for uh, I guess two measures. F sharp minor, it's an E minor, and then an A7. And that melody is just starting on the G, you're going to go up to A, back down to G, and then an F sharp. And it sounds really cool when you're playing it in chords. Oh. <laughs> Sunday afternoon fun. <laughs> Clay, if you uh, so it, you're backing that up, would you use different chords when you go to? Sometimes, yeah. So I'm I'm holding like what I like to do is what well what I was doing was actually kind of holding a similar G to what Corey was doing, but to add a little bit more. I guess separation between what I'm doing and what he's doing, I would kind of come in um, with kind of like hammering on the rest of the chord. So I'll bar in the second and I'll do a strum and then put my fingers down for this G. And this is the reason why um, I actually also prefer to play this with the low G as well because you get this sound. You know? So if like the whole finger style part is a little bit more difficult, um, for you, you can actually kind of get most of the rhythm down by kind of simplifying it a little bit. Um, basically, I'm just holding my G like this and hammering onto the chord. So, and then you have your F sharp minor here. There's another chord that I'll play sometimes in place of this, which is right here, like a F sharp minor seven or A six. Uh, so you get a totally different voicing. So if you listen to um, these two different ways of playing it, or two different ways of playing it, you have a really interesting sound. So here's the other one. And then back to the other one. And then instead of nor doing a normal E minor, I'll do an E minor 7. Yeah. Okay. And then from here, um, I'll play an A7 like this so this would kind of be like a G7 shape but I'm playing it with all my fingers except for my pointer and then I put my pointer down on the top string second fret once I reach in position to hold the rest of the chord so all together
Kali's comps. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kali's comp- I, I love compilation. I love uh, being riddled and support. Oh like, yeah, you're. It's so much fun. <laughs> well, okay, it's favorite. great how <laughs> you guys have different schools of technique, you know, and together it it's kind of better that way in a way when it when it works. Oh yeah, I mean like a lot of times like we're just trying like ideas out as we're going, and you know most of the time it works, sometimes it doesn't. And, but it's it's a great um, experience to be able to figure out, you know, what you can do with with other people that you're playing along with. That's what I like doing too is level. like doing <laughs> these obscure chords over those. Uh... I forgot what I was just playing. You know, like over. Um... I just had this weird melody. Uh... Anyways, uh. I like a lot of the stuff you do. Um, if you're jamming with other people, um, instead of doing just a regular G, you can. Uh, you like to use the. Oh yeah, Amal is using G major seven up here. Yeah. yeah. So you could do that, and then the uh, F sharp major or F sharp minor seven, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and you could add that uh, harmony, oh, yeah? I guess. Can you do the uh, the regular so. main line? Um, man, we don't get much, but yeah. when we do, it's a treat. This one's a feather weight. I mean, all of them are. And uh, that's what helps contribute to that uh, very breathy kind of ukulele sound, which is a nice, super open sound. Yeah. It just fills the room. Um, so, spruce rosewood combination, one of the best um, in history. Like, that's probably going to be the best wood combination as far as like what you get you yeah. get you get a lot of depth you get a lot of brightness you still get uh, a good amount of warmth in, in between the uh high and low uh, sandwich anyways back and sides this is some really nice south american rosewood on here with the uh nice uh bright kind of texture not texture but color good contrast between the dark and light with the uh, maple binding this is the uh, 12 fret to the body that's a double check <laughs> that sure. <laughs> <laughs> to check the receipts but uh, 12 fret to the body that changes the bridge position to a little bit of a sweeter um point on the soundboard get a little bit more fullness when it comes through. got the Pepe uh, UT2 low G fluorocarbon tenor set on here Koto tuners with the uh, is that bell shape mm-hmm. buttons which are always nice I Super think I even have that on there tulip, tulip. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that is a tulip <laughs> Where did I get bell shape from? Well, it kind of looks like a bell too, you know. If you look at it from this way, it is. Clay's they, always they my just call it. <laughs> uh, anyways, Doctor Shiraki. <laughs> Clay is a fine chiropractor. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, uh, Rosewood. 
Uh, same rosewood on the fretboard and bridge. Uh, nice two tone here. This is really, really awesome. Yeah, with the skin bracing. So, in case you don't know what the the skin bracing is, uh, Pepe can use less bracing in general with this this type of skin bracing. And what that skin is is this very thin layer of uh, wood. It's usually it's from the it's in the, it's the bottom bout and it's tapered off at the edges so um it's a little bit different than a double top like what clay has but mm. kind of a similar pr principle because then there's no fan bracing or anything um below the um the cross what is it what's that called that the bar across here no so it's just this nice thin layer of spruce I'm, I'm guessing well it yeah it's a tapered you know um piece that's put in there to act as the braces in a kind of a more even way than what braces do maybe so that allows for that really nice open but balanced some of those you can get too too much of a bassy sound with your low g this one is uh nice and smooth so smooth down, so. Last chord, I was gonna do a harmonic, and I was like, You're looking at the 10th fret. Oh, one. which one is it? And I just went to a C. <laughs> it's 12th fret, I would have went. Oops. Get something out of it. That sounds cool. Something. Instagram mm -hmm. contest is who can play the cleanest harmonics and you can't use the 5th, 7th, or 12th. <laughs> oh, all the farce. False <laughs> harmonics. Yeah, I forgot about it. Never mind. You got to do it with your, uh, with your ring finger. Is it the ring finger that they, they pluck like with? And... Oh. So Pepe has parts. like this stash of central south american rosewood that's like super rare that's one of the coolest things about this ukulele i want to call it south central oh american that's uh the rough part yeah <laughs> south central <laughs> experimental with the chords oh yeah as in there's a lot of chords
works out right. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> really fun song if you you know if you're a fan of Family Guy. It's like we are, or it's, was. It's an awesome show. <laughs> I don't really get to watch it as much as I used to, but there's a another theme. I think we were talking about it at Nam with Abe. There's a second. There's like two or three themes of the Family Guy. Oh, yeah, there's another that's one that's like that big band one, and then there's like this really up pace, like really fast tempo one. There's like. Was that the one that was like the, that, the, 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 the... It's on the... Mm, the it's like 30 or 45 seconds for the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what would be really cool? If you did the... Uh, if you did like both of them like back to back. Like went into the... Oh yeah. It would be like Crazy G. Faster! Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what I'm thinking. <laughs> One day. All right. I remember that's how. Yeah. Um, we're gonna end tonight with some banjos. Oh, the fireflies. Yeah. Have made it back to Hawaii. <laughs> Yeehaw. I'll take the oh, I'll man. take the concert <laughs> one, the <laughs> blue one. Just trying to think of like something like that out of the box that you wouldn't. That was... Yeah. I don't know, like it, oh, something like, like that surfing? might sound kind of cool. Yeah. Um.
we can do uh we can do the bluegrass or that reggae <laughs> but it sounded like almost like an instrument from another country or something yeah it was meant to it was meant to be it's quite it's quite versatile actually it does you can uh sit it on your lap and play it like a drum it's pretty cool so the magic flute company is uh a wonderful american company all of their stuff is made 100 percent in america and and it's totally different including their banjo use <laughs> yeah. it's uh one of the things i really like about it is there's they're lighter in weight than other banjo ukes and there's no like hardware on your arm kind of a deal going on right this is but, awesome uh, i mean it's like what hand, are they or banjo for a hand <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I was like, I started giggling when you had that. Oh. I thought we were gonna play some. Oh God! <laughs> oh. So no, not with You've heard of juice. Edward Scissorhands? <laughs> My this boy was, was born with a banjo lele for a hand. My firefly is so they named him Hanjo. <laughs> greater than thou, Billy Hanjo. <laughs> Y'all heard of Edward Scissors hands, right? <laughs> well, well, my down boy. in the south, <laughs> we got a. <laughs> it would be harder to play if it was attached. <laughs> you wouldn't have one hand. <laughs> that very was a very clever uh, of a design. But Anyways. if you get your friend to hug you, he can play. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's uh, yeah, he'll just. Make your own. <laughs> I can't tell if we're funny or just really stupid. I don't know. It's I, like it's, it's getting towards we're midnight. All tired right now. Yeah. It's we had a long uh, day, long weekend actually. It's like uh, you know when you start hallucinating after staying up for seventy-two hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what we're experiencing. Getting yeah. delirious. <laughs> getting like. Mixed up with like ukulele names. <laughs> that never happened. First, you would never thing? say Pono for Ono. <laughs> well, they're, they're both Ono. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> so, go. <laughs> you can only get away with it if you say Ono backwards. Ono means delicious, but also could be a fish. But it definitely ain't Ono. <laughs> no. no. Ono, my bad. Not with those. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Get some banjo tunes one at a time. I can't do that. Um, this is the uh, Firefly Tenor Banjo Lele. that percussive stuff
tapping my thumb on the the soundboard. And as I'm tapping it, I'm resting my thumb a little on the bridge and brushing my pointer finger on the strings so it's getting that, that chunk. And then my middle finger is plucking the, any of the melody on the bottom strings. It's like an uh, alternate version of doing a claw hammer. You know? In what way? Because the claw comes first. Which... Yeah, because in the claw you rely on like the up, the um, your your position to do an up pick with your pointer or like your middle finger, depending on how you do it, and you're doing like a uh, a rest with your thumb. But like this way, you get a little bit more of a percussive kind of thing. With a claw hammer, that's uh, that's that. Uh, usually with that kind of tempo, right? That tri triplet. Soprano kind of. Kind of. Like ragtime. Like the 1930s soprano old radio kind of. That, that, uh, that really comes through nice, that chucking. Yeah. yeah. This thing's fun. <laughs> I'll get murdered immediately. <laughs> Late at night. Oh. I'm gonna play you a lullaby. <laughs> That's just a quiet neighborhood. All you hear is it. If it wasn't your wife, your neighbor. <laughs> I would just get ganged up on. Just... Oh my goodness. Japanese <laughs> guy. I mean, this, the sound can penetrate walls. Like, like the wall. This is the kind of instrument you want to bring to a jam session. Oh yeah, With definitely. Like if you want to be heard, yeah. Yeah. And there you go. You if you want to get hurt, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see these in, in some of the like Americana style bands. Yeah. It it it's a really nice compliment to like the sound of strings because it's different and it cuts. You know. Definitely. It's in its own range frequency. Like with these, you don't need pickups. You just need a microphone. <laughs> So, Clay's got the little brother. I got the concert Firefly. Um, that one's had super light. A long time. Yeah, it's fun. It's super lightweight, very durable, well made, sounds good, um, good quality uh, materials used for this, 100% built in the USA. I forgot to mention these both come with the upgraded uh, Peghead tuners. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we all we only order the magic flukes with like all the upgrades you can get with them. The yeah. wood prep boards, the uh, yeah, the peghead tuners, and it makes a big difference. Huge, in I love your these experience. tuners. Oh yeah, definitely. Firefly concert. <laughs>
like some hash browns. Ooh. Some biscuits and gravy. Get some of Fresh that. country farm eggs. Easy over <laughs> eggs. Oh, Ooh. man. So All right, good. guys. Time to eat Grits. dinner. Yep. We better get to sleep so we can have breakfast. Oh, I'm going to eat dinner before I go to sleep. <laughs> dinner? Dinner. I got You're going to nice... get home at... Oh, what I was the only one that ate dinner. I have some nice beef pot rolls to waiting for me. If... Oh, I got stuff Can't in my wait. fridge too. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, send us off, Kalei. Don't forget to continue to support us by subscribing, clicking the like button, and also the notifications. Thank you so much for making us part of your daily week. Signing off, my name is Clay Gamiao. On behalf of Andrew Kitakis and Corey Fujimoto, we want to wish you uh, an awesome Aloha week. Take care, and until next time. I like that, an Aloha week. Welcome to the Aloha week extravaganza.